What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to the channel. And folks, we have some key reports regarding top players out there and their current connection to the Metropolitans. But before we get into it all, all I ask is that if you're new to the channel, don't hesitate from smashing that like and subscribe on sharing this video with your friends, put on the notification bell, all those great things. Thank you guys all so much in advance. And of course, I have to let you know also that today's show is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports betting needs. So make sure you head over to betonline.ag using promo code BELIEVE at B L E A V. That way you get a 50% off welcome bonus bet online it's where the games begin and now folks let's let the show begin because before we deep dive what is the topic of discussion today regarding not one but two key Japanese players set to hit the MLB as soon as this season and their current connection to the Mets let's break down an even newer report that came out last night at the time of recording this from John Morosi of MLB stating the following that yes the Mets are one of three teams already in advanced trade talks with the Tampa Bay Rays as the Rays are expected to make a floor moves ahead of 6 p.m.'s deadline Tuesday, that being November 15th, because that is when teams need to have their roster figured out by then for the Rule 5 draft, and it's smaller market team like the Tampa Bay Rays every year. They always want to shed salary, shed payroll, regardless of the talents of those players a lot, because they want to protect guys in the Rule 5 draft. It makes perfect sense, and unfortunately for the Rays and their fans, there's a strong likelihood that they're going to lose some arms that they loved over the past year or multiple years, but the Rays are also known for being that pitching machine. They're getting guys out of nowhere every single year with their great development through their analytics group among other things and the Mets are in the market for pitching whether that's starting pitching or relievers they can use them all so don't be surprised if you see the Mets have a potential deal in place over the next 24 hours or so with the Tampa Bay Rays question is what player or players are that going to be we will soon find out you know maybe it's going to just be lower end relievers maybe it's going to be high end relievers maybe it's going to be a Tyler Glass now maybe it's going to be Shane McClanahan I'm not getting my hopes up and the Mets did draft Shane McClanahan back in the day but he turned them down to go back to school just in case you guys weren't aware of that one but regardless on what the Mets do keep an eye on them because they're one of the current teams in advanced trade talks with the Tampa Bay Rays club that has a hard deadline by 6 p.m. Eastern time I believe tomorrow at the time of recording this to get some moves done to clear up some roster spots for them going forward so just keep that in mind folks but let's get to the topic of discussion today and that is from reports that came out a couple days ago Michael Mayer Mets and Rise dropping key piece here saying the following that yes the Mets are scouting two top MPP stars, that being in right-hand starting pitcher Kodai Senga, who I'm so excited about, and corner outfielder, wherever you want to put him, that being in Matasaka Yoshida, the left-handed bat that is versatile, a guy that has been compared. I even seen rumors compared to a Mark Canna S because he's an on-base machine. So my raw reaction to this news, and I want to know your raw reaction in the comments below right now, is this is exciting because, look, do I expect the Mets to land either of these players? No. I'm going to be frank. I'll be a little surprised if they do only because of the fact that we've already seen further reporting that there are other teams supposedly against the offseason so anything can change that they're already getting, you know, looking like the favorites for a Senga or Yoshida. And between the two, I think I want Senga quite a bit more for obvious reasons, but we'll get into that. But the reason why I'm excited overall is regardless on the state of the Mets landing these players or not, it's great to see them active in these markets with players from overseas because Billy Epler, what did he do during during his time with the LA Angels. Oh, you know, he kind of went out and signed the best player in baseball imaginable across the world, that being in Shohei Otani. So he spent an extensive period of time scouting Otani overseas and bringing him to Anaheim, swaying him to be teammates with Mike Trout. And of course, that hasn't went the way the Angels have wanted because Artie Marino is one of the biggest, if not the biggest schmuck of an owner in all of sports. That's just the nature of the game. However, Billy Epler, known for his talents with scouting overseas, has now brought that intelligence to the New York Mets and has some Something that can certainly be an advantage and let's just say hypothetically in this scenario where the Mets do land one of these two players or maybe another player over the next couple years with Billy Upper as GM that automatically brings good things to this New York market in Queens we know that especially Queens overall you see a large mass of Asian descent over the years right I remember like it was yesterday last year in 2021 I was at a Mets game against the Blue Jays Hanjin Ryu was on the mound and I don't know if this was purposeful or not but it was coincidentally Korean night so the entire visitors section was filled with Korean descent and that was awesome to see that diversity there in the ballpark you see that when Shoya Otani every time he's out there in Anaheim with the Angels there's a huge market there and one thing to keep in note is that Senga's agent the starting pitcher from the MPB did make a note that he wants to one go to a big market club and two a team that is ready to compete for a championship as soon as next year so if you're looking from that standpoint you're checking off two boxes already in the Mets favor versus some other small 
smaller market say teams out there that are still ready to compete so biggest takeaway again is who are these players who's kodai senga who is madasaka yoshida Kodai Senga, folks, as you see here, he's one of the best pitchers from the MPB. This guy's been a top dog with a sub two year array in over 100 innings this past year and around his age 29 or 30 year old season. And what is so exciting about Kodai Senga is one, this guy has a filthy arsenal. He's touching 102 on the gun, comfortably sitting at 99 with the heater. He has the off speed pitches, but the big thing as well, not only the heater, is the fork ball, one of the most unique pitches you'll see out there so uncommon in today's game and would surely be uncommon should he bring that to the U.S. in the Major League Baseball and he's excited he's officially a free agent so unlike Yoshida that we'll be getting into in a second he doesn't need to be posted you don't have to worry about paying a fee compensation to the team that has rights to him overseas in the MPB no he's officially a free agent so he's already having the luxury of talking with teams from different cities and hopefully he's in New York soon if not a Ray talking to teams like the Yanks and the Mets on a potential deal happening and Senga is someone that can come in this mess rotation and he has potentially ace potential. Now, whether that's going to pan out or not is yet to be seen. There's always risk with players that are coming from the MPB. We're aware of that. Same thing goes with any, any guy that you land. Regardless on, you know, even Shohei Otani, there was risk going into that, but he quickly proved that, yes, he's a top dog. He's the most generational talent imaginable that we've ever witnessed with our eyes. Seriously, right? But going back to Senga again, he has a nasty arsenal. He's young directly in his prime. You can land him on a deal that's obviously going to be cheaper than some other options out there, even on a multi-year deal, which I'm sure he's going to be looking for. But someone that if you bring him in, especially in the scenario where, say, you don't land a Jacob DeGrom, or maybe you don't bring back a Chris Bassett, but you keep Jake, maybe you can do a replacement there in a Senga. Or maybe if you lose Jake, not that I want to see him gone, obviously, but maybe you land a Carlos Rodon. Maybe you go out and try to land Senga as well. The Mets have a lot of creative options here, and this is a guy that, again, has ace potential at worst can be your number three number four starter and for a Mets team that's in desperate need of rotation help how can you go wrong by giving a flyer out for a guy like this that will not only change the game and the type of culture that you're bringing to Queens which would be exciting something that the Mets really haven't had for the most part over large portions of their 60 year existence how many times have you seen them have a star player of Asian descent from the MBB it's almost never happened it's rare it's been few and far in between so this would be exciting for the Mets as long as things pan out but again I understand and the criticisms that this is a risk maybe not worth taking given the other available guys out there in the market but let's get on to the batter someone who i feel has a less likely chance of landing in queens because i've already seen him favored by other teams out there including the yankees that being in marisaka yoshida yoshida can play the corner outfield can even play a little center if you need him to but a lefty bat that what i've seen out there has mark canna brandon nimmo type qualities he's an on-base king guys over 440 obp in 2022 over 20 home runs runs roughly 90 rbis this guy gets on base at a ridiculous clip and like i mentioned earlier he's someone where if you want to land him you are going to have to pay a fee a compensation exactly what the cubs did last year with say suzuki who's a phenomenal talent a decent start to his career dealt with some ailments getting adjusted to north american baseball but still you have to pay a certain amount of million dollars of fees depending on whatever his mpb team is asking because they still have the rights on his contract so he needs to be officially posted needs to get that approval and once he does then you pay whatever contract offer you get from him but then you pay on top of that for whatever the fees the compensation is to land someone like him but no less you get someone like Yoshida he's someone that can actually benefit a Mets lineup with coming in that D8 slash corner outfield role as someone that can be that on-base king he fills that Billy up for that Steve Cohen type mentality of someone that can come into this lab get on base on a constant clip big question is how would that home run power transfer over to the states and that's something that i feel that the mets want to bolster up a bit more so while they're doing their due diligence with the scouting i will be fairly surprised that they land land one of the two but especially someone in matasaki yoshida i think if there's a stronger likelihood it would be someone like kodai senga who just has so much more appeal so much more promise for a mets team that desperately needs to add to this rotation and overall pitching staff and fast with a lot of uncertainties as we speak but with that being said mets fans that's going to conclude this video so make sure to let me know all your thoughts in the comments below what are your thoughts on a kodai singa matasaka yoshida the 
Tampa Bay Rays as well. What's your thoughts on all these latest news and rumors? And of course, stay tuned. Whenever any breaking news comes out, we'll be doing breaking news live streams or breaking news videos right away to discuss them. New podcasts coming out this week. Plenty of content, so make sure to stay tuned for those. Drop your thoughts down below. Make sure to smash that like and subscribe button if you found yourself enjoying this kind of Mets content and you want to see more great Mets content like this. Thank you guys all so much for your endless support. Love you to death. And as always, let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.